I'm glad you've joined us today for another session of word study. Matthew chapter 16, greatest confession in history, you are the Christ, said to Jesus. We're going to look today at verse 18. We're going to see that there's a word play and that there are some things, some significant things that Jesus draws from the word play that he says. So he starts off and he says, and I tell you, verse 18, you are Peter, you are Petros, and on this rock, Petra, I will build my church. And, second thing, the gates of hell, let's just go ahead and correct that right now. That should not be translated as hell, though a lot of translations translate it that way. It's the word Hades. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So, what's happening here? What does Jesus mean? Well, first of all, we should know that these two words here, Petros and Petra, this word play, they look similar, they mean something similar, they sound similar, but they do have different meanings. The word Petros does mean rock, but it's more the kind of rock that you can pick up and hold in your hand. In the Iliad written by Homer, he spoke about some soldiers picking up Petros and launching those at the enemy. This word, however, this rock, the word translated Petra, is not something you can pick up in your hand because it means bedrock or massive rock formation. All right. So, what what is going on here? What does Jesus mean when he speaks of this rock and and he's going to build his church on it and the gates of Hades are not going to prevail against it? Well, some have determined that Jesus means to say that he's going to build his church on top of Peter. But that besides the fact that Peter is just a petros, he's just a stone. That just doesn't make sense with anything that the rest of the Bible, neither Peter nor Paul, nor Jude, nor James, nor any of the rest of the individuals who wrote in the Bible would say that Peter was some kind of singular foundation. So Jesus has to mean something else. And whatever he does mean by this Petra is it's, it has to be immediately in view. It has to be in the context because he uses the word this. So this rock on this Petra. And we should be picturing, when we picture a Petra, we should be picturing like one of the layers of the Grand Canyon. So you could build on top of a Petra. You can't build on top of a Petros. So what is it that Jesus is going to build his church on? Well, the only thing immediately in view that could be understood as the meaning is what Peter had said right up here. Just the truth of this idea. You are the Christ. And the reason I say that is because it, that statement or that understanding was not revealed by mankind or by flesh and blood, but it was re revealed by the Father who is in heaven. So to say, so the Father revealed this understanding to Peter that Jesus was the Christ. Now, Christ means king. Alright? And there is at hand, at this point when Jesus is speaking, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is, has, has come to the world and, and Jesus was establishing the kingdom and, and Jesus was going to be the king of that kingdom. And So when, when Jesus is talking about, I will build my church, this church here, these are the same people that belong to the kingdom. So what's he saying? Well, let me write this out here. Concerning this rock or this Petra, he says two things. He says, number one, I will build my church on it. So on this rock, see this, on this rock, I will build my church. So number one, concerning this Petra, he's going to build his church. All right. And... 
when he says this, what he's saying is anybody who's going to be a part of this church is going to have a common foundation, a common Petra, common bedrock, which is a common understanding that Jesus is the Christ. So you're going to be a part of the church if you're able to share with Peter in legitimately saying Jesus is the Christ. He's going to build his church on that understanding. That's going to be the foundation of anything that anybody who follows Jesus has. They, ha they have to be able to say Jesus is the Christ. And then, secondly, he says, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. What does he mean by that? Well, this, when he says the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it, is, is he saying the gates of Hades will not prevail against the church? Or is he saying the gates of Hades will not prevail against this rock, which is the statement that you are the Christ? Well, the, the Greek would allow us to say either one of those. If you look at the original language, it, it doesn't have any preference either way. So we have to use some of our thinking and a little bit of exegesis to determine. And I'm going to say that when he says that the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it, he, he's saying the gates of Hades shall not prevail against this rock, which we've determined to be the truth that Jesus is a Christ. So he's saying the gates of Hades will not overpower the reality that I am the Christ. And here's why I say that. Because just a couple verses down, in verse 21, it says, From that time, from the time where he'd been saying all of that, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. Well, when you're killed, you go to Hades. Well, that's going to be a shock to the disciples' systems because who's being killed here? <laughs> Jesus, who is the Christ, which means king. Jesus is the king of the kingdom of heaven. And he's going to be killed. And so Jesus, back here when he's giving this statement that the gates of Hades shall not prevail against this rock, which is the understanding that Peter gave that Jesus is the Christ. He's saying that the reality that he is the Christ won't be nullified by death. Reason being, I'm going to raise up on the third day. So, so when he says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, he's saying death won't conquer Death won't conquer kingship. <laughs> Amazingly, the status of Jesus being Christ was not nullified by a death. It was ratified by it. I hope that you will have a blessed day.